Hey, what's going on everybody? This is your boy, RJ. I wanted to introduce myself and provide some important information regarding my new upcoming feature film title, Surviving Tough Times. Directed by Bernard Eatman at Urban Artist Film Production. And I also would like to shed light on my new upcoming musical hit stage play title, I Survived the Storm. Directed by Mr. Anthony Killebrew from the Tyler Perry Why Did I Get Married stage production. And yes, by all means, I am working on two production at one time. Absolutely. And I am staying busy. I come straight out of the heart of Midtown in a low-income housing community, Lamar Terrace, in a small city called Memphis. In 2012, after the passion of my mother, I upped and relocated to this gigantic city, beautiful Los Angeles, California, known best by most as the City of Angels. This is where I was forced to live and survive from hitting rock bottom. And this is where I live life to the fullest without any regrets. It's where I learned the most. I can say now, I have experience and something to offer. With so many types of offers coming from all kinds of people, I certainly could have been ruined for the rest of my life. However, it is through those struggling experiences that allow me to acknowledge that God had never left or forsaken me. As the old folks say, somebody was praying for me. Everything that my mother tried teaching me in my youth days was indeed put to the test in Memphis, Tennessee, when she said, Robert, be on your best behavior because someone's always watching you. And baby, every eye that's shut, they're not asleep. This is so very true, and I thought my mother was trying to scare me straight, which most of the time she did. I said that to say this. I wrote this movie, Surviving Tough Time, because life has knocked me down a few times or another. It showed me things I never ever thought I wanted to see. I have experienced some sadness and of course failures along the way. But by the grace of God, through it all, I am still standing. And I said that because I am so proud of where I come from. In fact, this movie is going to shed light on all the beautiful things that we did as teenagers and also some of the adversity we had to face to get to where we are today. You see, I come from a domestic violence family where my stepfather used to assault my mother almost every day. He used to beat the hell out of me. And I was more than just spanked. I was abused. And it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't typical for a kid to be, you know, abused by an adult. And I can say that because my stepfather was a drug addict. And my mom and I was on his menu every day in terms of getting our ass beat. So when I reflect back on those days, it tend to inspire me because, you know, I always been the type of person that look back over all my faults and all my misdeed and learn from my mistake. So growing up growing up in that type of environment, it made me hard as a train wreck. In fact, uh, I wasn't afraid of anything. Because you know you're dealing with certain things like that at the age of five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Then once you get 10, 11, 12, 13, in the teenage days, 
you've already been through so many difficult processes to when it comes to the point where you had to defend yourself, you wasn't afraid. So, I always been the type of person, I would protect my mother. And I can tell you, every single time I watched him assault her, I tried my best to defend her. And of course, I got knocked on my ass several times. But at the end of the day, it didn't even matter. By that time, like I said, I was hard as a train wreck. The beatings that he afflicted on me, shit really didn't bother me. Because I grew up getting whooping every day, so shit hell, I was looking forward to it, in other words. But it bothered me for me to see my mother suffer the consequences of all these, all the pain that he inflicted on her. And as I got older, the only thing would come to mind was doing bodily harm to this man. Really. Taking his ass out. Taking his ass out. I'm serious. Every time I see my mother with the black eyes and broke nose and busted lips and bruises, I mean, that shit bothered me to the point that I wanted to really do something bad to that man. But I guess uh, leaving him, my mother decided to just get up and leave and, and moving into Lamar Terrace, I mean, that was a breakthrough for me, literally, because, you know, my story, and it's not all about me. In fact, this film should, in my opinion, inspire the community. Because, you know, we all grew up in poverty. We wasn't raised with a silver spoon in our mouths. But I can, I can tell you this, and, and this is the truth. We were raised with integrity, dignity, and respect. Our elders. With that being said, uh, if my next door neighbor saw me doing something wrong, they had permission to discipline us. I mean, whether it got to the point where they slapped me upside my damn head or beat my ass, it didn't matter. Because once it was reported to our parents, there was another witness. And we tend to respect that. Because there wasn't anything Miss Mary Brown couldn't tell me that I wouldn't do. Miss Willie Mae Hendricks couldn't tell me that I wouldn't do. Miss Bernie Sykes wouldn't tell me I wouldn't do. Miss Lula Bell Alexander wouldn't tell me that I wouldn't do. I mean, Mrs. Jones tell me something I wouldn't do. I mean, it just, that's how we embraced our community. We respected the people that cared about us. The very same one that prayed for us. That was our safety net. I mean, we had activities every day. We played baseball, we played football, we played basketball, we played craps. I mean, we pitched horseshoes, we played volleyball. I mean, community activities, recreations, that's what we had. And we, 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 we bonded, it was continuity. I mean, it was a thing that we was able to appreciate. We would learn, we would talk, we educated one another, we learned from one another. And honestly, me watching my other peers and some of the people that I looked up to, it made sense to me when I saw them fuck up in life, not to duplicate that very same mistake because what happened to them could easily happen to me. So I used their mistakes as a stepping stone. It was a tool for me to better myself and keep myself on the right path to righteousness. Let alone, we had the elderly people to embrace us with love. We had our friends that we grew up with to embrace us with love. We cared about our community. We cared about one another. Of course, nothing was perfect. We earned everything that we accomplished. No one gave us shit. No one gave us nothing. I mean, education was important to us. We couldn't go outside 
and entertain one another in recreations if we had homework. No, we couldn't go outside until we completed our homework. We could not have company until we completed our homework. And most importantly, graduation was important to each and every one of us because we was excited to walk across that stage and receive that diploma from high school. But right to this day, kids in this generation, it doesn't matter. So when one says to me, I mean, these are my critics, the haters in other words, that I'm not supposed to be in the position that I currently hold right now, I beg the difference. Because once again, ain't nobody gave me nothing. Not one ounce of knowledge, not one ounce of education, not even a clear vision about my future. I solely depended on the Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ. That's my source. For everything that I have accomplished, it comes through Him. And guess what? The beautiful part about me, I don't depend on man for nothing. I don't depend on a woman for nothing. In terms of friendship, in terms of doing things for me. Because at the end of the day, men fail every time. But God does anything but fail. He does everything that he promises us. So that's my safety net. So yeah, Surviving Tough Times is a, a feature film. And like I said, it's directed by Bernard Eatman at Urban Artist Film Production. And uh, it's sending a message and it's raising the words for a variety of causes such as homelessness, mental illness, healthcare causes, mental health and sex, a lot of social community um, issues, in other words. So, I wrote this movie because I, um, I wanted to shed light on some of the things that we did as a teenager because, you know, when we disrespected one another, and even when we disrespected one another parents, I mean, it's just like you couldn't disrespect your friend mother, your friend father, I mean, because they're being so, there were consequences. And I mean, you either got your ass beat or you either beat somebody else's ass that talked about your parents. And it wasn't this pistol playing shit. It was like, put this shit up and let's do this thing. You know what I'm saying? I mean, don't be afraid to take an ass whooping. And that's why you guys killing each other right to the day because you're afraid to take an ass whooping. But see, back in our generation, in the early 70s and 80s, taking an ass whooping wasn't shit for us. We endured the pain. And after the fact, I got my ass kicked or I kicked somebody else's ass, we going out and drink. We going out and party. We going out on that basketball court. We pitching horseshoes. We on the baseball diamond. We doing all these things together again, and there was no grudges to be held. You know what I'm saying? Real warriors, in other words. So, okay. Now, enough of that. Uh, that's, that's basically going to be some of the things that's going to be in the uh, movie, Surviving Tough Times. And uh, the play is another... Um, another production that I consider that's going to be touching it because it's going to hit some of the the um, major uh, concerns in the community as well uh, it's just that we're going to display it on stage and bring some real celebrities into the production a lot of singing and it's a musical and we're going to sing out against diabetes, we're going to sing out against breast cancer we're going to sing out against homelessness I mean we're going to, it's going to be real, well scripted just like the movie, it's going to be characterized with some of the people that I grew up with. And, um, and this film is, is going to be dedicated to the community, not just me. And I'm proud that God had put on my heart to be one of the successful people that grew up in Lamar Terrace to do something about their future and try to do something to encourage the public uh, in terms of uh, keeping things in perspective and raising awareness for 
a variety of causes and I mean it's important to me because um, when I lost my mother in 2012 I mean life got really difficult for me I mean I couldn't I couldn't seem to get it together I mean I was down on my luck I um, I went through some some issues concerning my family and um, I was you know divorce was final and a lot of things that was going on in my life I just had to get it together and I couldn't get it together uh, by myself and um, like I said as you know in the old days old folks they prayed for us and it was their prayers that kept us on this earth because we were too damn stupid and dumb to pray so going through so so many difficult uh, um, issues and adversity in my life I knew that I needed a source and I, I needed a resource to be able to get myself together because I couldn't change me but I was smart enough to know that we serve a God a God that sit high and look low a God that has everything that we need in the palm of his hands so yes that was my resource and I mean I wanted to change I didn't want to be the old person that I, I used to be I didn't want to be the person to be committing a lot of uh, infidelity uh, cheating on girls um, lying to people uh, you know just trying to just trying to get by I wanted to do the right thing in order for me to get myself together because I had to mend the relationship with people that I really loved and that was my family and um, of course the divorce was something that I never thought I ever you know see but you know things happened but one thing for sure I was able to go to God in all sincere and asked him to make a way fix this situation that I'm able to go back to my ex-wife Glenda Jameson and, uh, and let her know that I'm sorry I wanted to tell her face to face that I'm sorry for all the things that I did to break up our family and break the bond I mean you know the bondage uh, family love was always important to me and it was me and um, I prayed and I prayed so hard I mean I prayed to the point where I, I prayed I grind I fought I prayed and I asked God to forgive me I cried I mean my heart was broken all of the devastating thing that will happen to a person when you have remorse and you know that you know you're not that person and, and you don't know I mean I don't know when the hell I was back then but I knew that this woman loved me unconditionally and my children they love me unconditionally and these are the people that I hurt and right now this is not even about me it's about them I needed to patch this shit I need to make it right I need to go to people that I hurt in relationships during the infidelity stages of my marriage I needed to go to the people that was involved with me and even tell them that I was sorry for getting them caught up in certain situations I mean that's growth I mean the shit that I did then was stupid and I, you know, and I had to look in the mirror and I had to tell, and I had to look directly at myself and tell myself, tell me to stop faulting people for my own actions, you know. Take the responsibility and blame yourself. So, yeah, that was my, that was my comeback. And my comeback, I'm, I'm telling you, when I came back, I came back like a beast. I mean, literally, I mean, I had, you know, God put me back on the right track. I started realizing that, hey, life has some significant things for me in the future. And so, one thing for sure, when I moved to Los Angeles, California, I didn't come here to become an actor. I didn't. I mean, it's just what, you know, when you pray for things, you have to be careful about what you pray for because you just might get it. I asked God to fix me, make me whole clean my heart renew the right spirit in me give me love forgiveness I mean passion I need I need to feel all these things all over again I, I need to be rejuvenated in another world I need to be born again I need to be washed clean I needed to be <laughs> if you will in a sense that I knew exactly where I was going and who I was going with you know so I mean becoming an actor I mean it put me in a different perspective now that I embrace something. It's another career. It's something that I love. It's something that I have, I have embraced. I mean, it's a craft. I mean, it's something that I learned to do. I mean, 
watching watching other people going through film production going through theatrical productions and you know just becoming this 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 you know this character man i mean it was so it was so i mean listen i i mean i'm still speaking to couple guess what i don't believe it even happened to me little me from the south little country boy from the south from the little small city called memphis look at me now hanging out with the stars making movies you know performing live professionally on stage and from sold out audience going to tv shows meeting the celebrities the cast on tv shows you know i mean luckily for me i have starred in so many films like right now and i can just see what god is doing for me it's already too numerous to count but i need to give a shout out to the people who embraced me gave me the opportunity to perform Tamika Coney thank you sweetheart Tamika she is the executive producer she's an actress she's an author director of the musical hit stage play The Truth so meeting Tamika back in 2013 I was on another production a theatrical production called The Year of the Diamond so when I met Tamika Tamika had already shot a very a very nice um, a movie called The Truth. So we collaborated on a different level because, you know, she was building her cast. I mean, and she met me on the theatrical play uh, set, and we were just talking. In other words, you know, she said she wanted me to audition to be a part of her musical hit stage play, which uh, The Truth. And so I said, "Wow, me." I mean, it's because I guess you know the character and some of the things that I didn't know about stage plays and I was just learning at that time so to to have the opportunity to audition was uh, was was cool I mean you know I uh, I got the role and when I got the role her brother Limo you know he you know he told me to loosen up I mean he embraced me he, he you know he showed me something that I needed to know to become that star and so you know and it was just simple little rules that you go by and you know and, and, and finding a character within you was one of the the tools and, and the roles I need to find. I needed to find a character in me and I need to learn how to project, you know, and entertain and um, you know, I mean just loosen up and and, and re recite that script, you know, perform. I mean that was a break for me. Trust me, that was a break for me. And um, I'm forever indebted to them too, because they really, really embraced me and you know, showed me family love. So I want to give a shout out to my boy Stefan Solar from the movie The Midnight Warriors. And speak of the devil, Stefan and I we're like this. Yeah, we day and night. And I say, cause I'm black, and he's Caucasian. So we're day and night, but we're buddies. We're good friends. Um, in fact, um, him and I we co-direct. I am the co-writer of his uh, movie. A surviving tough no I'm sorry so shelter life and um, he and I is the two lead um, um, stars in that movie I want to give a shout out to my boy Deontay Bowden Deontay Bowden met me through my boy B Love um, at Urban Art and Film Production and um, I have now starred in three of Deontay Bowden films um, which will be coming out soon. They're now in post-production. This guy, he's still writing movies, and I'm still going to be a part of his film. So um, give a shout-out to my boy Deontay Bowden, um, the writer, director of the movie uh, When Pride Comes Before the Fall, The Price of Fame, Wicked, the web series, where I'm one of the co-stars in all three productions. Peace to you, Deontay. Thank you, my brother. Really appreciate the love that you have showed me. Um, I want to give a shout out to my girl Jerry Locke in Carbondale, Illinois. She is the uh, writer, producer, director, author of the uh, movie and stage play Cougar Blues, musical hit stage play. And uh, I was, you know, honored to perform in, 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 you know, in Carbondale, Illinois, in her play Cougar Blues. And thank you so much for the opportunity. I'm also want to give a shout out to my girl uh, Carol Johnston over at Audience Unlimited. Uh, Carol and I, we've been cool for over a year now, and um, through RJ's production, which is my production company, I'm now uh, taking new upcoming actors, 
uh, getting them involved into the film production. I build audience for TV shows such as Two Bro Girls, Dr. Ken, Disjointed, One Day at a Time, Odd Couples, uh, Dr. Ken. Did I say Dr. Ken? But anyway, the Dr. Ken show, um, uh, a whole lot of, uh, of TV shows. I mean, just so much that God has done for me over the over the uh, past six years, man. I'm indebted to God because I'm telling you, He's my He's my man. I mean, He's my father. He's he, He's the warrior. I mean, He's a hit of my life, and I am so so grateful uh, that uh, I had sense enough to, to get it together, man. Because like right now, I'm a totally new person. I've been made whole. I've been born again. I mean, I got the biggest degree in this world, and it's that born born again degree. And it's because I solely depend on the Lord, and uh, I wouldn't. Um, I wouldn't change this for nothing in the world. So, um, I want to uh, thank everybody for listening to me. That's my story. Uh, please, uh, by all means, support me because, trust me, I still need your love. I still need your support. Surviving Tough Time is coming to you soon in uh, spring of 2018. Be on the lookout for it. I Survived the Storm, uh, uh, directed by Mr. Anthony Killebrew uh, from the Tyler Perry Why Did I Get Married production. Watch out for that play because I'm telling you it's, it's coming soon. Um, hopefully, by the grace of God, if we don't get it going in November, December, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come out big in um, January. But right now, I'm currently casting for both productions. Um, I am the writer, director, executive producer of, of my own feature film and my musical hit stage play. Thank you all for listening to me. I'm Robert Jameson, uh, the owner, founder of RJ Production, TV, movies, and uh, films. Peace. I love you guys. Take care of yourself. And I'm out.